Okay, can you hear me? Yes. I've, I was told that I'm, I speak softly, and that surprises me because those of you that know me, I feel like I'm always too loud. <laughs> so, so I will speak loudly. Okay, we do, as, as Scott said, two to three times a year when myself and the children tell a godly play story, and we tell it big instead of using the materials that we use in our classroom. And today, you're going to really be participating. So before I tell you about the story or even tell the story, we got to do some practicing. So raise your, hand, your bag if you have a bag, and if you were given a bag with two little pieces of paper and some matzo. Excellent. OK, so I'd like everyone to take out the tan piece of paper. Everyone take out the tan piece of paper, OK? This is what you will use when I talk about the desert. And you won't have to wonder when to do it because I'll be sh showing you when to do it. So I want you to practice. Everybody lift it up. Not the blue one. Uh-oh, I see a blue. Tan. Tan, tan, tan. OK. All right. Now this side, you watch this hand. This side, you watch this hand. Do this. 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 <laughs> and then stop. Okay. Now, put it back in your bag. Now get your blue piece out. This is going to be the water. Get your blue piece out. Everyone, stand up, face the center aisle. Get your blue piece up, face the center aisle. Okay. Especially you on the very edge, make yours go over like this because you remember this is, yeah, hang, yeah right in there. So, but everybody else just kind of be leaning forward. Okay, so when Moses gets back there and he can't get through, uh-oh, uh-oh, and then I'll say something like, Moses put his staff down and the water's parted, pardon. Okay, <laughs> but, but stay standing because Pharaoh's army's going to come and when Pharaoh's army gets about midway, you'll hear me say, and the water closed over them, close over them. <laughs> and that's the end of them. Okay, and then you sit back down. Okay, and you can sit. <laughs> Matzo is for later. Time that we eat the matzo. So don't. So you've got your marching orders. That's what we're doing. All right. So this is the story called the Exodus. Iconic story. I'm sure you know it. The story of Moses leading his people through the water to freedom. And uh, we're going to be telling it for you godly play style. In the classroom, they have a desert box, this box with sand, and we use little wooden figures, and that's how the story is told. But since we can't bring a box of sand in here, you're the desert, you're the water, and they're the characters. So am I loud enough? Yes. Okay. So let me begin. The desert is a wild, get that brown ready, the wild and dangerous place. It's burning hot in the daytime and freezing cold at night. And when the winds come, it stings people's skin. And then sometimes it shifts so much that you can't tell where you're going. The landscape keeps changing. No, the desert is not a place people go unless they just have to. The people of God just the people of God the people of God were living in a place where the rains did not come. Nothing was growing from the ground. They were so hungry, some of them even started crying. And so they knew that they were going to have to find a place that had food and water, and they were going to have to go through the desert even if it was dangerous. So they packed all their things, and they took off into the desert. This way, this way.
It was a long, hard journey. They were hot. They were tired. When they find a place with food, water, Some of them were so hot they were fanning themselves. Others were leaning on each other. The desert was indeed a dangerous place. Finally, they made it to the land of Egypt. And when they got to Egypt, they found food and water, but they also found the king called Pharaoh, and Pharaoh trapped them. They had to go to bed when Pharaoh said to go to bed. They had to get up when Pharaoh said get up. They had to eat what the Pharaoh said to eat. They had to work hard whatever work the Pharaoh told them to do. They had become enslaved. But there was one person of the people of God who went to Pharaoh and said, let my people go. And Pharaoh said, no. Well, Moses didn't give up. He went back and forth and he came again and said, let my people go. And Pharaoh goes, no. And he went back to his people. And then some terrible things started happening. Plagues. Then the most awful thing have happened of all, the oldest boy of the Egyptian people died, including the Pharaoh's son. Well, now the people of God discovered that their oldest did not die because they had painted the blood of the lamb on the door sill so that the angel of death would pass over them. And so this time when Moses went Pharaoh and said, let my people go. Pharaoh said, yes. So they hurried and they began packing all their things together and then they knew they needed food so they started mixing flour and water together. They didn't have time to put the leaven in there to make the bread rise. They were going to have to have this flat matzo bread. So anyway, they stuffed it in their packs and then they hurried because they were afraid Pharaoh was going to change his mind. They hurried, hurried, hurried. Now, when I send the Egyptian, she goes in front of you, on your pew, in front of you, but wait till you get part. Okay, here we go. And they got to the edge of the, oh, wait a minute, stop. Pharaoh's army did begin to go. Give him give some sound. army got very close. The next thing they knew, Moses' people to a place where there was water stand. And the water, they didn't know what they were going to do because now there was water and they couldn't get through. Moses stepped out and Moses came so close to God and God came so close to Moses that Moses knew what he was supposed to do. And he put his staff in the water, and the water parted, and the people of God hurried through. Some looked scared, some looked happy, some looked confused, some were holding on to each other, but they got through to the other side. But oh no, Pharaoh's army decided to follow too, so they came through when they saw the open waters, and they hurried through, they hurried through, but then the water closed over them. They sit. <laughs> when the people of God got to the other side, they were free. And Miriam, Moses' sister, she led the dancing. Thank you. Good dancing. So, now it's time to get your that means if you don't have a matzo, I uh, need my helpers that we selected earlier. 
going, you girls are going to the choir and to the clergy. And uh, Grace, you're on this side. Raise your hand if you don't have matzo, and Jacob will come to you, or Martha Grace will come to you. If you do not have matzo, you might need to get other eyes. Martha Grace. If you do not have a matzo, we're not eating it yet, though. We're holding on to it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Amelia, let's give Godly Play one also, some matzo. Boy, you get one too. Oh, I got to get one too. All right. Let's make sure everybody's got one before we do our final bit. So in God, every time we hear this story at the end, we taste the story. When we taste the matzo, we're remembering how God helped his people through the water to freedom. And so, together, let's taste the story. And the children and I together say, Amen. Thank you.